The Toyota Harrier has always been overshadowed by the more premium and luxurious Lexus RX. In fact, there was this one generation that the Harrier looked exactly the same as the Lexus RX. But still, the sales of the RX soared while the Harrier just didn't do very well. Or at least not as well as expected. We fast forward a decade or two and this car's predecessor came along. Now it still looked nice, but just lacked the sort of chicness, that sort of sophistication that needed to bring out the Harrier on its own, to have its own identity. But this car that you see right here is the all-new Toyota Harrier and it looks like nothing Lexus has ever produced. In fact, to my eyes, this is way nicer than the Lexus RX now. And it's all thanks to the headlamps up front. Very slick, very sharp, sort of conveys a sense of premiumness, conveys a lot of elegance, tells you that this now has its own identity. And it's the same as the rear. Let's check it out. The Toyota Harrier Hybrid 2.5 Luxury is priced at $174,888. The 2.5-litre engine produces a combined output of 215 brake horsepower. The eCVT transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.1 seconds. For more details on the Toyota Harrier Hybrid or any other car, head on to sgkarma.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Now this is what I'm talking about. The tail lights now run the entire width of the car at the back. In fact, to my eyes, and I know to a lot of people's eyes, this whole feature here reminds me of a certain German sports car maker, uh, one of their models at least. It looks very premium, it looks very slick, and that's just this whole thing, to me at least right now, the Harrier finally has its own sense of identity, has its own look. Now you look at this, especially at night when it lights up, it just conveys a sense of premiumness, a sophistication. You look at this and you'll never believe that this car costs just some 174,888. It looks like it costs a lot more than that. Now, the boot space, and it's electric tailgate as standard as well, so excellent stuff. Once you open this portion, you're faced with 400 litres worth of hauling capacity. Now, it's not the best in this class, to be honest. 400 is actually quite pathetic, but it's long enough to pass the anti-trolley's length test and the luggage. And in all honesty, and to be fair, space has been com compromised because of the sloping roof line of the Harrier. Now, if 400 liters for you, this just don't seem enough, well, no worries. <laughs> Second row seats will fall flat, but however, there is a small problem. There are no hooks by the side here to knock the rear seats down, so you'll have to do it manually. And in order to do that manually, because the boot is so long, I can't reach it. Ah. There you have it. Now the seat in front has been, as usual, adjusted to joint sitting position and with that I'm still getting a lot of leg room uh, and some head room. I'm about 1.6 meters tall, um, but I suspect people up to 1.8 meters would have a bit of a squeeze to the roof and that is because of the sloping roof line. So I think 1.7 will still do, 1.8 a bit of a squeeze, but that's it, ample leg room for sure. Um, but the good thing is at least the seats are, that I'm on very, very comfortable. In fact, its seats slightly recline. Uh, so it sort of makes me feel very relaxed when I'm here. In fact, this whole dark theme uh, cabin, including the black coloured roof lining, which is my personal favourite, sort of gives me the whole Japanese VIP hospitality feel. Like I come in, I'm, it's like as if I'm being chauffeured, sitting behind, I can relax and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really good. But I think a lot of it also has to do with the leather materials that's used, including the ones here. Now this, this blackish greyish thing with this brownish thing is all leather wrap and it's actually soft to the touch so it feels very very premium uh, this right here wood trimmings making it whole giving it the whole zen zen like sort of vibe seats here you get isofix point here and isofix point here so it's still very family oriented this right here soft leathery stuff uh, you get two cup holders unfortunately you don't have any you know storage space to put your barang barang but well you can actually have coffee at the back now moving on to center seat comfortable just as soft as the as as sides um, because it's front wheel driven so 
transmission tunnel is down low you can put your feet up here or down here if you want you still have enough space for the buddies by the side but what really really takes the cake is thank god this Harrier comes with rear aircon vents something that we really really need in our climate yeah well there are a lot of personal favorites for me in the Harrier and one of them is the location of the power button right here it's just on its own you know how most cars have the power buttons like here or here or for Skoda it'll be here um, and the steering wheel sort of blocks the location like blocks you from pressing the button properly but this is very nicely located it's just nicely it's almost like a missile button right here if I press it everything just sets up to your original seating position Toyota engineers have obviously been very considerate for that and it also sort of makes you feel like how premium this car really is. It just makes you, makes ingress and egress a lot easier than a car that would just be like this, especially for a short guy like me, where I have to sit nearer to the steering wheel because I can't reach the pedals, obviously. So getting in and out of the car um, is sort of a problem, but this just solves everything. Now, I'm faced with a multifunctional steering wheel right here. Feels very good to the touch, this leather wrap place, but unfortunately, I don't like this thing here. It's actually plastic, hard plastic, if you can hear it. It's sort of made to look like leather with all the thick leather grains, but I mean, obviously, it's plastic and I know it. I'll probably, if I buy the Harry, I'll probably have to bring this to an aftermarket merchant to just have all this wrapped up so that it'll look coherent. Now beyond that, the instrument cluster, well, it sort of feels like it's year 2001 and not 2021 because it's not fully digitalized, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of car manufacturers have this whole area digitalized for the sake of, I don't know, trend, for the sake of, I don't know, marketing gimmick, what have you. So it sort of feels like it's more like a need than a one. But it'll be nice to have it if it's fully digitalized, but what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that it's not working, it still works. But it's just I wish for more. Of course, you get the center portion is just fully digitalized. Of course, you get all your fuel economy and your radio and your settings all there controlled by these buttons here. Now, if I move on here, this entire tablet is about 12.3 inch. However, and unfortunately, the screen that you really... It's just this small little thing here. It's not the full width. So this is more like 8 inch and 12.3 inch. So you feel a bit cheated. But I mean, the good news is... This works really well. Go onto the menu, you can go into settings. I mean, you can even customize your home screen. So it's quite user-friendly. You don't really have to like meddle with it like for like a day or two to get used to it. Just a couple of minutes, the job's done. Now, moving below, this is where the buttons that you meddle with on a daily basis are. Um, fan speed, temperature, aircon temperature, everything is here. But my personal favorite is where all these things are. You get auto hold function, godsend. You have electric park brake button beside it, EV mode, and of course, all the different driving modes. All wrapped with this leather thing, follows through with two cup holders. And then you get this ventilated seats. Thank God for the ventilated seats. Whoever invented ventilated seats just poof. I want to give him a hug, man. So, anyway. Yep, ventilated seats for me will always be on. Now, these are some of the personal favorites that I have, but I can tell you this. What really, really takes the cake is this. Check it out. The roof uses, or rather the glass of the roof, uses electrochromatic um, innovation, so to speak. Now, this invention is so cool on the Harrier because at the touch of a button, I can just boop, semi-opaque where, you know, sun will come in you know light will come in all that kind of stuff um so it's rather hot on a sunny day like this and if i still want my car to feel bright not that dark just one press it's like as if i switch on the light somewhere on top and it's just brighter now because if i were to close it especially at night the car can get pretty dark and i don't really like that i want my car to be slightly brighter i mean like you know nice ambient to it so that is just poof. Now, the other thing that's really cool is the Harrier now comes with this. See that? So it's a full-on camera that can actually view the back of the car. Um, unfortunately, this is not high definition. I mean, it, it probably is, but it's, there are other cars that has got a better system than this. This, especially at night, it just feels like it's lacking the sharpness 
that it should actually have compared to some of its peers. So I'm just leave it like this most of the time. There you have it. A lot of cool stuff in this car. Only question is, can the Harrier drive as premium and nice as it looks? One way to find out. So, this is the Toyota Harrier 2.5 litre hybrid luxury variant. Um, it's basically the top of the line variant in Singapore where you'll get all the niceties like, you know, the lovely dimmable roof, rear view mirror, camera, live feed, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know what, first things first, let's just get the figures out of the way, right? It's a 2.5 litre hybrid, produces a combined output of some 215 brake horsepower, blah, blah, blah. In all honesty, I don't care. And I suspect people who buys the Harrier won't even care at all. Because this car is so comfort biased that it just makes you feel like I don't really want to drive fast in this car. I had enough of fast driving all of a sudden. I've been driving this car for full three days. I haven't even spent once. Well, I tried. In all honesty, I tried. I tried giving it the beans around bends like a foolish moron and I realized that this car is just not up for that. But it does carry some speed through very, very well and very, very smoothly. It's quite a lot, you know, these figures, right? This 215 brake horsepower and stuff. It really, it's sufficient, I would say, more than enough. Overtaking maneuvers are done with ease. The only problem is I don't feel like driving fast. As a matter of fact, I feel like driving like a gentleman. I feel like driving like a responsible father. I think that's, yeah, I think that pretty sums it all up. My wife actually got a shock. She's wondering why aren't I driving like a madman? I said, well, this car is just so premium and comfortable on the inside at least that I just don't feel like doing anything stupid with it. I want to be seen driving this car like a father, a responsible father at least. That's how this car makes you feel. I did try driving it like a moron, like I said earlier. It actually doesn't work very well. That said, it feels a lot tighter and more taut than its predecessor and predecessors. And I think it has got a lot to do with the fact that this car is based on the TNGA platform, which is basically Toyota's global platform. It's the same platform you'll find on the Camry and so and so forth. The newer Toyota model, so to speak. And this platform allows the car to be stiffer, yet comfortable. I don't really know, I don't even know how the Japanese did it. But, well, they succeeded, right? So in all in all, I have to say this car, not only does the Harrier now have a distinct identity, it now has a very distinct character. A character, I would say, something, it's a character that I'm beginning to like. So that begs the question, right? Will buy, won't buy, or go try this Toyota Harrier 2.5 hybrid luxury? Yes, please go and buy the Harrier. <laughs> I like the Harrier for so many reasons. I can't even focus on, on, on I, I don't even know where to begin. But you know what? I'll just focus on one very practical reason. This Harrier will transport your family from point to point in a very comfortable and luxurious manner, all for a price of 175 grand. Isn't that good enough? I mean, in all honesty, I've not driven the two litre petrol variant. I want to, because I need to know if this is better or the, 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 the two litre petrol is better, but I suspect this car might actually be better because it's more powerful, it's quieter, I managed 16 kilometers per litre over the past three days. I I don't know how my colleague did it. He did 19 point something. Maybe he didn't try and give it the beans, I don't know, but I did. And it's nothing short of impressive, 16 kilometers per litre. We're talking about a car that weighs just under 1.7 tonnes. So yes, I will buy this car, definitely. So there you have it, guys. That is the review of the Toyota Harrier 2.5. 
luxury hybrid. <sighs> what a long name, but yeah, what a lovely car. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the review as much as I've driven it. Please don't forget to share the video with your friends and family and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button below so that you will be notified every time we upload new videos. Also, please feel free to comment in the comment box below and let us know whether or not you will buy, won't buy or go try this car. In the meantime, stay safe, be well,